Our son Peter is almost 10 months old and we've already made the decision that we would like to send him to private school for kindergarten through high school. So today I wanted to sit down and talk about why we're making that decision and how we plan to save for it. Hey guys, I'm Marissa and welcome back to my channel. Here on my channel we talk about life and money and how you can enjoy life while still accomplishing financial goals through the use of a budget. So if that sounds like something interesting to you then scroll down and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any new videos. So I have an almost 10 month old son named Peter and we have made a pretty big decision of how we would like his education to go starting in kindergarten and that is taking the private school route. So let's talk about why we made that decision and how we plan to pay for it because it's definitely not cheap. First off, I wanna start by saying that I have nothing against public school. I went to public school, kindergarten through high school, and I had a great experience. One thing that I really enjoyed about public school is that you have a lot of different options. I was able to do you know, choir, be in a couple choirs, take different electives. I also, this sounds bad that I'm like sharing this because I'm you know, like almost 27 years old. So I'm not like reliving the glory days of high school, but I even did graduate as valedictorian of my public high school class. And overall, I just had a great experience in public school. So I have nothing against public school, but I did go to private school for college and I really enjoyed my experience. I went to a private Christian university and that's where I met my husband, Jacob, and we are a Christian family and those values are very important to us. So Jacob, on the other hand, actually did go to private school, preschool through high school. He went to a private Christian school and then he ended up going to private college as well. So he also really enjoyed his experience going to a private Christian school. So between the two of us, we got to have both experiences. I think the biggest reason of why we want to send our son Peter to a private school for K through 12 is because of the religious values that he would receive in the classroom. And again, I will completely support whatever anyone wants to do for their family, what's best for them. But we would just really love to have the opportunity for our children to have faith integrated with their classes. And I got to have that when I was in college and I really enjoyed that experience, like getting to take business classes while also having like faith integrated in that I thought was really neat and I would just like love to have that experience for Peter starting out even in kindergarten I think would be really awesome the other thing that I like about private school is the smaller class sizes this enables the kids to I feel like have this really cool bond and also is great for learning to have more like one-on-one -on -one attention you know if needed with the teacher I know Jacob still has some really close best friends that he's had since preschool, which is really awesome that he's like stayed in touch. And again, his class size was maybe like 13, 14 people or something like that. And so he has this like really tight bond with this group of kids who he like basically grew up with. I think the one thing that was really holding me back from wanting to make the decision to do private school was that public school gave you more options. You could be on a sports team. Like I, I was not sporty at all, but I really enjoyed going to like Friday night football games at like my big public high school. And it kind of would make me sad to think that like Peter wouldn't get to have that experience or play sports if you wanted or whatever. But I learned that for kids in private school, like private school does still have some sports activities and competing teams that you can be on. But if that school doesn't offer like a sport that you want to do with like golf or swim team or tennis, then you could even do those sorts of things at the public high school district that you're in. So I really like that that could still be an opportunity for Peter if he wanted to do some sorts of sports when he's in high school. So those are basically our big reasons of why we would want to send Peter to private school. And we're deciding this very early as again, because our son is not even 10 months old, but we're deciding this early mostly because of the financial factor. So I wanted to touch on that and share about how we plan to save for this cost. But I wanna give a little disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. If you're considering this for your child, please, please, please speak with a financial advisor and do your research so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. I'm just sharing our plan. This is not financial advice. So we plan to save for Peter's private school tuition with a 529 plan. A 529 is an investment account for higher education expenses, like for college expenses. 
The great benefit to a 529 is that it has tax-free growth. So you put the dollars in after taxes, you then invest those dollars, it can grow tax-free, and then you can take that money out tax-free to be used for qualified educational expenses. Up until a few years ago, a 529 was only to be used for higher ed or college university type expenses. But in 2017, there was actually a tax change that allowed you to use $529 for K through 12 private education. And the new tax ruling for this is that you can take out up to $10,000 a year to be used on private K through 12 tuition. And that is specifically tuition only. So this is a great benefit to be able to pay for private K through 12 schooling with a 529 because you can get that tax-free growth and then you can take that money out tax-free up to $10,000 a year to be used on tuition only for private K through 12. Now the catch here is that this actually varies state by state and this is really important to account for. I actually live in the state of Oregon. We have an income tax and in the state of Oregon by contributing to a 529, I actually do get a little tax break from that, but Oregon has set their own law and that you could take money out to be used for private K through 12 and you wouldn't have to pay federal tax on that, but you would have to pay state tax on the growth. So I will actually leave an article down below that I found really helpful. It's from the college investor. I'll leave it in the description box and I would highly recommend checking that out if you are considering using a 529 for private K through 12 education because they go into a lot more of the details and how that all works and I would highly recommend again I'm not a financial advisor but I would make sure that you also check out your state's specific requirements because there are a few states that still do require you to pay state tax if you are taking this out for K through 12 expenses so obviously since I live in Oregon I would have to pay state tax on that growth so it's not as helpful but it still is helpful because you're not having to pay federal tax on that now with using the 529 for K through 12 expenses, I know that it could really go either way just because our son is almost one year old and kindergarten would start in four years. So there isn't really that much time to be able to invest and see a return that it would be beneficial to use the 529 to pay for kindergarten. This would be better in a longer term aspect. So maybe we decide that we want to just fund out of pocket for like kindergarten through third grade and then after that we'd want to dip into the 529 or something along those lines but obviously the longer amount of time that we could keep the money in there the more that it would have the potential to grow so this would be a better potential if we used it for like high school kinds of tuition so I want to share our plan for saving and how this is going to impact our budget First off, we plan to focus first on our own retirement savings. The thing is, Peter could totally go to public school and it would be fine. Going to private school K through 12, I feel like it's just an additional thing that we'd wanna do because we had the money in the budget and we're able to make these sorts of life decisions because like we don't have debt that's overwhelming us and we have an emergency fund and we have these things in place that we can make life decisions for ourselves not solely based on like the cheapest option. And I'm really grateful that we're at this point in our lives because we did work for several years to get here. But all that being said, it's not a necessity for Peter to go to private school for K through 12, but my husband and I still do plan to retire and so we want that to be a focus. So before we put anything else to college, we've decided that we wanna put at least 15% away for retirement savings. We actually have about $100,000 in our retirement accounts now, which is really great and we just wanna keep that growing. So we're first and foremost going to have the focus on our own retirement savings because we have to take care of ourselves before we can help our kids. The next thing is that we are going to continue to put $200 a month into the 529 for Peter's college savings. So we actually opened our 529 for Peter when he was like a month old, when we got a social security number, and we decided to put $200 a month away for it. And at that time, we were only thinking of saving for college. So we wanna continue with that and put $200 a month in it earmarked as like, you know, we're going to continue to put $200 set aside for college specifically. We want college to be a bigger focus before private school K through 12 because college is going to be a much bigger cost and it's going to be something that he would have to pay for either way. Whereas again, K through 12, we could go the free route and do public school 
and private school isn't a necessity. So we want to continue to still do $200 a month and think of that as that's what we are still going to contribute towards Peter's long-term college savings. We then are going to start saving extra for private school K through 12 costs. And with that, I took a look at the private school that's near us that I would love to send Peter to. And I took a look at their current tuition rates and kind of thought of, you know, what it might be and how many years, just made an estimate, and kind of saw how much I'd expect to pay for private school. And therefore, I came to an amount of saving about $500 extra per month to be able to cover private school expenses for K through 12. So that is going to be saving $200 a month that's going to go for college and then an extra 500 that's going to go for K through 12 private expenses. So yes, that is a total of $700 a month to be saving, which is a lot. And while I was doing more research on this, I actually heard some advice that might be to have two separate 529 plans so that we can make sure that like the $200 a month that's going towards Peter's college and then this other one we could be saving for private school tuition to keep them separate. And that way we're not dipping into like his potential college savings to be able to cover K through 12. So that might be an option that we'd want to look into. So we'll see what we decide on that. And I also wanna end this by saying that plans always change and I wouldn't be surprised if our plans change. And as we've learned in 2020, our plans change and that's okay. So if it ends up that we decide not to send Peter to private school, that's okay. We will have had money saved up in his 529, which then could be used for college related expenses. So I don't personally feel like it would be a loss if it ends up that he doesn't go to private K through 12 because we could use those dollars later for college and maybe that would mean we wouldn't have to save as much in later years. So there you have it. That's why we are planning to send Peter to private school for K through 12. And we're going to start saving that extra $500 a month when he turns one. That's kind of what we decided because we have a couple other financial goals that we're wanting to meet right now. And then once we do that, it should be around May, which is his first birthday. Then we'll start adding extra to the 529 to be able to hopefully cover some private K through 12 expenses. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on sending your child to private school for K through 12, or if your child does go to private school, let me know. I'm very interested to learn more about private school. I've heard some people say that they think it was totally worth it. Some don't think so. So I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye.